First Timothy chapter four. If you have it, say praise the Lord. We're gonna begin from verse twelve. It says, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example to the believers in the word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, faith, in purity. He said, Paul is talking to Timothy. He said, now till I come, he said, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. He said, verse 14, he says, neglect not the gift that is in thee which was given thee by prophecy. And to talk about the spirit of negligence. Paul here is telling Timothy, until I come, I want you to give attendance to. I want you to give attention to. I want to, you to give yourself to. To reading reading the word of God to exhortation and to doctrine. He said, now you have been given a gift that has been given unto you by prophecy, by the laying hands of the, of the pres presbytery. He said, now don't neglect the gift that has been given to you. He said here that if you, that you have to give yourself, you have to cultivate you have to sow to the gift that God has given you. The gifts that God has bestowed upon you. And today that's what I want to talk about. See, God gives us gifts. God gives us talents. God gives us responsibilities. But through trials and tribulations along the way in life, people go ahead and they put the thing that the precious gift that God has given you, amen, and you put it down. You get caught up in the things in your everyday living and you take the gift that God has given you and you put it down. You put it down but not paying attention to it. You put it down by putting it on the back burner. You put it down by forgetting about the gift that God has given you, the talent that God has given you. Verse 15 is, it told them, meditate upon these things and give yourself wholly to them. Take it serious. Meditate. Then like Peter said, he said, add to yourselves. It's a fruit of the spirit. So he said, he said, see if you lack these things, you're gonna be barren and unfruitful. And we know that you cannot get into heaven being barren and unfruitful concerning the things of God. 
Meditate upon these things. Give yourself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto yourself and to the doctrine. Continue therein. Not sometime. Not when you feel like it. Not on a good day. But meditate and continue in these things in your everyday living. He said, for in doing this, I shall both save thyself and them that hear you. Amen? Amen. Now, let's just talk about how some of the gifts and the talents, you know, uh, and we've seen it all because we know that when God sent forth the ministry, amen, I say he, he gives them what it takes to make it. And we see a lot of talent, even, even in our group here. Kids get on the, on the, on the keyboard or on the... Um, uh, on the drums, just play a little bit, amen, with now formal training, and they get it. Amen? Now I want to show you how that all comes into place. Exodus chapter 36. God is giving charge unto Moses concerning the work of the tabernacle, amen, and in sending them forward, amen, God put people there in, in certain places so that the work of the Lord can be accomplished. Exodus chapter 36. If you have it, say praise the Lord. It said, then rot, then rot, Bezalel and Aholiad and every wise hearted man in whom the Lord put wisdom and understanding to know how to work everybody everybody read together how to work all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary to all that the Lord had commanded and Moses called Bezalel and Aholiad Aholia, and every wise hearted man in whose heart the Lord had done what? God had put wisdom. Amen. In the ministry. Amen. When, when responsibilities are placed on the different ones. Amen. It's not because, you know, this person is good looking and all is because God has put wisdom in them for certain responsibilities. For certain responsibilities. And I know that a lot of, a lot of the uh, 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 church organizations, they have a lot of politics because people have a problem with different ones and the responsibilities that God has put in them. And they don't realize that God has put wisdom and understanding in certain people for certain work, for the work of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Gamaliel said, I said, let's not fight against this man, lest we happily find ourselves fight against God. See, sometimes, you know, people will get envy and strife, but you got to be careful. That while you're fighting your brethren, that you end up fighting against God. What God has already established. Amen. You have to sit back and see the hand of God in different situations. Amen. And, and you cannot always choose the job that you want. But God knows what you're going to be good at. Amen. God knows where you will fit in best where you will be utilized the most. So Moses called, verse 2, and, and every wise-hearted man in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom, every one whose heart stirred him up to come unto the work to do it. That's why you see zeal in people. All of a sudden, God has put wisdom, amen, and something, ignites something in them, and they're ready for the work. And sometimes even they themselves don't even understand where it all came from. And they're ready 
to do the work of the Lord, ready to do the work, certain works that God has put upon them. Verse 3 says that they received of Moses all the offering which the children of Israel had brought to the work of the service of the century to make it with all. They all worked together. Amen. In the different areas, in the different entities pertaining to the work of the century. They say that all the wise men that wrote all the work of the century came every man from his work which they made. Amen. Everyone went and got busy with what God had given them. They, were, they didn't sit there and, and worry about what they, their, their brother was doing, how they weren't doing it the way they thought it should be done, but working together because we are what? Many members, but one body. And they spake unto Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work. Amen. They were walking and being led by the Spirit. See, if we walk in the Spirit, when you're led by the Spirit and focus on God and the task at hand, you can accomplish a lot. Amen. See, sometimes the flesh gets in the way. Amen. We know the Bible says that they that amen walk after the flesh will persecute those who walk after the spirit. They're gonna be trying to do the work, but they that are in the flesh will be criticizing amen, trying to create to put on to put stumbling blocks along the way. Amen. Nevertheless, the, the work of the Lord cannot be stopped. Amen. And they speak unto the to Moses saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord commanded to make. And Moses gave commandment and caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, let neither man nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing. Amen. Amen. They worked together. Amen. And they were zealous for the work of the Lord that they, that they completed the task way ahead of time, brought more than enough than what was needed for the work of the this sanctuary. Amen. May God give us the mind to work. The mind to work. Amen. Anything that, any responsibility that you have. Amen. May God give us the mind to work. Amen. Be ready to work. Amen. And do. Amen. What we're supposed to do. Amen. 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 Let's turn to Genesis chapter 38. We're talking about being careful uh, not to not to be negligent, amen. Now this chapter is talking about uh, Judah and his sons, amen. Uh, verse two: And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite, whose name was Shua, and he took her and went in unto her. She conceived and bare a son and called his name Ear, and she conceived again and bare a son and called his name Onan. And she yet again conceived and bare a son and called his name Shelah. And he was a Chesib when he bare him. Judah took a wife for Ear. Judah took a wife for his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. And Judah's firstborn son, you say, was wicked in the sight, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. Amen. And Judah said unto Onan, Go in thy brother's wife and marry her and raise up seed to thy brother. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his. And it came to pass when he went in unto his brother's wife, where he spilled it on the ground, lest he should give seed unto his brother. Amen. So here it's talking about uh, Judah and his two sons. Now the firstborn, a man married a wife. But he was wicked in the sight of the Lord. The Lord slew him. Now we know that the kinship redeemer. Amen. The responsibility falls on the second born. The, the, the brother right behind him. To take up uh, his brother's wife. Raise up seed for his brother. 
Now, he didn't want to do it. There are some responsibilities, amen, that will come your way, whether you want to or not. Not by your choice. Amen. There are some things that will be put in your way, and you cannot avoid it. Amen. He couldn't choose his, but he couldn't choose his parents. When he was born, they were there. He could He didn't choose his older brother. When he was born, his older brother was there. And now his older brother has died. It is his responsibility to marry his brother's wife, raise up seed for his brother, but he didn't want to do it. Amen. He didn't want to do it. He didn't feel like it. But it was his responsibility. In the Lord's eyes, it was what? His responsibility. He had a responsibility and he had to do what? Fulfill it. Church said, praise the Lord. Lord. And, and what did God do? Verse 10. Everybody read together. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord. Therefore, wherefore, what did God do? God slew him also. Because he said, it's not my job. I ain't asked for it. This is not my job. I ain't asked for it. Like some people do. I ain't say I wanted it anyway. But God held him accountable for the responsibility. Whether he wanted to do it or not, he was responsible for the responsibility. And God held him accountable. There are going to be things, amen, there are going to be things that you're going to have to do when your flesh does not feel like it. But, amen, you got to please the Lord because we walk in the spirit. We have to bring the flesh under subjection. You gotta do it because it is right and pleasing in the sight of the Lord. Am I right? Amen. Amen. Let's turn to uh, let's turn to Matthew chapter twenty-five. Familiar parable, Matthew 25, talking about the talents. Matthew 25, beginning verse 14. He said, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods, and unto one he gave five talents. To another two, to another one, to every man according to his several ability. And I, when I was I, I was reading that something something uh, uh, clicked right there. To a one he gave five, to another two, to another one. Every man according to his what? Several ability. That means they all had what? They all had ability. And straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the five, with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise he that had received two he also gained other two. But he that had received one, amen, went and digged it into the earth and hid the Lord's money. He had talent as well. You know, there's a, there are people that, you know, you, you'll have people that uh, 
they look at the responsibility sometimes that they have and they think that it's minor. Amen. My, my job is to, is to sweep the floor or, you know, and, and, or sometimes they look at their, at their uh, fellow brothers and sisters and they wish that they would be doing, they, they should be doing more. But you have to be faithful in the, in the what? In the small things. Then God said, then I, I will make you ruler over many. But how can you be faithful in the small when you're too busy and then looking at the other thing that somebody else is doing, amen, and neglecting, amen, the few that you have, not being faithful with the few that you have. But he that had received one digged it in the earth and hid the Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckons with them. And so he that had received the five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou delivered unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful of a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Amen. We want to examine ourselves. Amen. And be sure that we have not neglected talents, responsibilities, and gifts that God has given us. You want to be sure, amen, that the gift, talents, responsibilities that God has given you, that you didn't, amen, dig them under the earth. You didn't, you didn't get too busy. You didn't take them for granted. His Lord said unto him, well done. Amen. And, and the reason why I'm saying this is because there's a lot of work that comes up. Amen. And, and, and God is faithful and he blesses. You want to be sure that if you're, responsive, if you're responsible for something, for the work of the Lord, amen, that you, amen, take those five talents and gain five other talents. Amen. Don't take an entity and let it die out. Don't get weary of doing right. Because we shall reap in due season. But you gotta learn to endure. Amen. I know sometimes things get hard, but you've got to endure. You've got to press. Know for the work of God. For the talent, the responsibilities, and amen. The gifts that God has given you. Paul says, come on, give yourself to reading. Take that that God has given you. Amen. And don't neglect it. Give attendance to it. Don't take it and then put it down. Verse 21, it says, His Lord said unto, unto him, Well done, that good and faithful servant that has been faithful of a few things, I will make thee ruler over many things, enter thou into the joy of the Lord. He also that had received two talents, came and said unto the Lord that delivers unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant that has been faithful of a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Then he which I received the one talent came and said, Now he had talent, not a lot of it, I could have played the drums. Hold on for a few songs, but when when the music got high, he can keep up. But doesn't mean go two years without practicing. Then he which I received the one talent came and said, 
Lord, I knew, I knew thee that thou art a hard man. I knew they weren't going to use me. I would sit there two first days and they didn't ask me. I looked around and there was three other players and by the time they called me up, it will be a year and a half from now. But we have to be always what? Ready. Reap him where have, thou hast not sown. I knew that thou had a heart, was a hard man. Reap him where thou hast not sown and gather where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. The talent is sitting right there. When the way you first gave it to me, I didn't do nothing with it. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and what? Slothful servant. Thou knew, you know this was from God. Thou knew that I reap where I sowed not, and gather with where I have not stored. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchanges, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which has ten talents. Give it to him that has put it into what? Good use. Give it to him, a man that is pressing, that is working, that is giving attendance to it. Give it to him. Give it to him because he's ready to work. For unto one that has shall be what? It shall be given. And he shall have abundance. But from him which has not shall be taken. Even from him that which he has. Even the little bit that he has will be taken away from him. Why? Because he neglected the gift that was given to him. Because he neglected the gift that was given to him. It's important that you neglect not the gift. Neglect not the gift that has been given to you. Amen. Just one more scripture I want to touch on. Uh, the people who like to say I don't want to get involved. In the book of uh, 1 Samuel chapter uh, chapter 25. This is my last scripture, 1 Samuel chapter 25. It's talking about that wicked man, Nabal, uh, who was married to Abigail. And you all know the story how when, you know, David protected the man and all they asked for was some food. But neighbor turned around and said, who is this David? And so, word got back to David. And David was angry and was going to avenge himself. First Samuel chapter 25, somewhere around verse 30. Let's start from verse uh, 28. This is Abigail. It says, I pray thee, forgive the trespass of the handmaid, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house, because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord, and evil has not been found in thee yet all thy days. Yet a man is risen to pursue thee and to seek thy soul, but the soul of the Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the Lord thy God and the souls of thy enemies them shall be sling out and as out of the middle of a sling and it shall come to pass when the Lord shall have done to my Lord according to all the good which thou with the good that he has spoken concerning thee and shall have appointed a ruler over Israel that there shall be no grief unto thee no offense you remember that he uh, she went 
that the food and, and her servants and they met him halfway, that there shall be no grief unto thee, no offense of heart unto thy Lord either, that thou hast shed blood costless, or that the Lord has avenged himself. But when the Lord shall have dealt well with thee, then remember thy handmaid. And David said to Abigail, Amen. When Abigail now had, had found out, she got the food. Amen. On her husband's behalf, he, he was a sign of Belial. And so she, when one of the servants went back and said, hey, listen, David is going to come here and go kill us all. You better do something. So she got the food. Amen. She just didn't sit there and say, I don't want to get involved. So she had the responsibility to protect the rest of the people that were innocent there. And David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord of Israel, which sent this, this day to meet me. And blessed be thy advice, and blessed be thou which has kept me this day from coming to shed blood and from avenging myself with my own hand. For in every deed in this, for in very deed, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, which has kept me back from hurting thee, except thou had hasted and come to meet me. Surely there had been not left unto Nabal by the morning light any that pisses against the wall. Amen? Sometimes the lot may fall on you. You ain't asked for it, but the lot has fallen on you. You got to do something. Amen? You can prevent a tragedy from happening, amen, by paying attention, by listening, by being at the right place at the right time. Now, if she, if, if she had decided not to do anything and the people came and got destroyed, she would have known that, hey, I could have done something. If she had been negligent, David said, I would have destroyed all of you. Amen. Jesus said that my sheep know my voice. And the voice of the stranger they will flee from. You have to have an, an ear to hear. A heart and a mind to receive. Let us examine, let us examine ourselves. Amen. Paul said, necessity has been laid upon me because God has given me a dispensation of the gospel. Necessity has been placed upon me. I'd rather do it willingly. I'd rather do it willingly. Amen. Because I'm going to be judged for it. A dispensation of the gospel has been given unto me. Necessity has been laid upon me for the work of the Lord. He said, I'd rather do it willingly. Amen. Necessity has been placed upon me. He said, God has given me all these responsibilities, all these blessings, all the gifts of the spirit. But he also said that I put it all under me. I, I bring it all under subjection. So that when I'm preaching to others, I don't become a castaway. Amen. I walk in humility. Because I realize that there is no one, no good thing in this flesh. Necessity has been placed. A dispensation of the gospel. I have been called to preach the gospel. I'm going to do it willingly. Because I know that I have to answer to God 
for what he has given me. I want him to say, well done, that good and faithful servant, enter thou into the joy of the Lord. I don't want him to say you're slothful. Because slothfulness, you know what? Slothfulness is a sin. Let us take heed unto ourselves. Let's take heed unto ourselves. Amen. Because the Lord is soon to return. The Lord is soon to return. What will you have done with the talent? What will you have done with the responsibility? If you put it down, if you had already you know you've already put it down, repent. Pick it back up. Do something. Work while it is day, because the night time cometh when no man can work. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap praise in this place. Thanks. 